Hey, it's Rachel Cook, your modern mentor. And today we're going to talk about the reality of having to stay focused on work while it feels like the world is screaming around us. Because some days it's just so hard to stay on task. But there are strategies I'm using and recommending. And if you too are wondering how to focus in the face of chaos, then stay tuned. Okay, tell me if this feels familiar. Some days you get up and you just attack the day. You're focused, you're in the zone, you are dripping with the sweat of productivity. Oh man, I love those days. And then there are the days when the world just feels like it's on fire, like you're being pummeled by scary headlines and the idea of trying to focus on work feels like a joke, but like not the funny kind. I've had enough versions of this conversation with people around me to know that it isn't just me. I think more of us than not are struggling these days to focus in the face of so much chaos and uncertainty, but still the work has to be done. So how can we take back that sense of control and tune the world out for just long enough to get the things done that our bosses, teams, clients, and customers are expecting from us? Well, here are some levers I've been pulling. First, I doom scroll and sweat on a schedule. I am old enough to remember a time when consuming the news actually meant getting to a TV or radio and like turning it on to find scheduled programming. And yes, before you ask, the TV was indeed in color. Do I wish we could return to those days? Honestly, not really. LinkedIn and the gram on balance, they make my life better, I think. But The always-on and ever-present nature of social media makes it really hard to wait for the 7 o'clock news to air. I'm not disciplined enough to avoid social media altogether. I need my fixes during the day. So I book them into my calendar. Literally every couple of hours, you'll find a 15-minute window reserved for scrolling, and then a 5-minute buffer for having some feelings. I live by my calendar completely, so I start and stop my scroll on time every time. When I finish scrolling, if the headlines have been rough that day, am I able to turn off my feelings completely? Uh, I am not. But because I know I have another date with Twitter in a few hours, I'm sort of able to set things aside until then. By building these scroll dates into my workday, it both helps me focus on the work at hand, and it limits my need to spend evenings and weekends deep diving down dark rabbit holes. It's not a perfect strategy, but it helps a little. Next, I shift my focus from task to impact. It's hard to focus on designing a meeting or writing an article or meeting a client while the world literally and figuratively burns around me. But designing, writing, meeting, these are actions. They're the things I have to do. And when I'm struggling to get into doer mode, I remind myself why I'm doing these things and what impact my focus has the potential to deliver for others. I don't design meetings so I have pretty slides and workbooks. I design meetings so a group of leaders feels better equipped to lead their organization through change or to craft an employee experience that leaves their people feeling lighter and more connected. I write articles not to hear my own voice, but to offer perspective and actionable advice to others who may be struggling with a challenging workplace issue. By reminding myself of the impact my work has on others, I'm reminded of why it matters. And while yes, the fires raging around me are still distracting, they lose some of their power to call my attention away from doing something meaningful for someone else. Next, I reset my expectations for the day. I don't know about you, but I always seem to have like a million and four things on my to-do list. So on the days when my distraction is just untouchable, I prioritize things I can get done with less attention. I load my busy work into these days. I send invoices, I manage upcoming travel, I map out, but I don't write or edit key messages that I need to send to clients or prospects. And if the distraction is simply too much, every once in a blue moon, I gift myself with a mental health day. When these days strike, I know I can power through and refine my focus the next day, which I'll spend playing catch up. And on those days, I give myself the grace to do what I'm able. Next, I focus on what I can and can't control. Wildfires, wars, political unrest, it is so heart-wrenching. And the truth is, there's little that I can do. But usually there's at least some small action I can take. So in the moments when my ability to focus is hovering around like a negative four, I find a small action I can take 
I sign a petition, I make a donation, I write a letter to my senator. By taking an action, I feel, even if only slightly, empowered and accomplished. And then I'm in a better position to recognize I've done what I can, and the rest is out of my hands. Watching it play out won't accomplish anything further, but having made a small contribution, I'm able to refocus to some degree on the work at hand. And finally, I yank the thread on my values. Being distracted by loss, suffering, or threats to the safety of people around me doesn't make me bad at my job, but rather it makes me good at humanity. And sometimes I just need to remind myself of this. The empathy I feel for others whose homes are burning or whose safety is at risk is the same empathy that makes me an excellent designer and facilitator. My willingness to listen to both sides of a complicated moment in politics is the same willingness I have to listen to struggling teams during pulse check engagements. Sometimes just remembering this helps me to double down on my capacity for empathizing, for listening well, and all the other good qualities that leave me hurting as the world hurts. And suddenly I'm able to access those qualities and really infuse them into the work I'm doing as soon as I'm ready to work again. Because offering myself grace in these moments is not really negotiable. And there you have my magic formula for staying completely focused on my work during times of chaos around me. Except there is neither magic nor a formula, and I am never completely without distraction. But hey, I'm getting by, and I hope these tips help you to do the same. Join me next week for another great episode. Until then, visit my website at leadabovenoise.com. If your organization is looking to crack its activation code, dialing up performance and employee engagement. You can follow Modern Mentor on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Find and follow me on LinkedIn. Thanks so much for listening and have a successful week. Modern Mentor is a quick and dirty tips podcast. It's audio engineered by Dan Firevend. Our director of podcasts is Brandon Getches. Our podcast and advertising operations specialist is Morgan Christensen. Our digital operations specialist is Holly Hutchings. Our marketing and publicity assistant is Davina Tomlin. And Cameron Lacey is our marketing contractor. Music